Thank you for joining us here today. My name is Lorena Rodriguez. I am the captain at Sheriff's Information Bureau. Today, Sheriff Alex Villanueva and members of our Narcotics Bureau will announce the outcome of a joint operation to eradicate illegal marijuana operations. Joining us today, along with our executive staff, representing Board of Supervisor Catherine Barger, Communications Director Helen Chavez, Assembly Member for the California 36th District, Tom Lackey, representing Congressman Mike Garcia, Field Rep Jackie Owens, Lancaster Vice Mayor Marvin Christ, Palmdale Mayor Stephen Hoffbeier, and officials from the California National Guard Counter Drug Task Force and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. Now it is my honor to present the Sheriff of Los Angeles County, Alex Villanueva. Thank you, good morning everyone. Yeah, it was just a year, we were here, a year ago. Okay, in 2021, the Marijuana Eradication Team met, served 387 marijuana cultivation related search warrants, resulting in 301 arrests and the seizure of over half a million marijuana plants, 105 firearms, and over 62,000 pounds of harvested marijuana. This is the year 2021. The first four months of this year, the same team has served 160 marijuana-related search warrants, 107 arrests were made, 100 misdemeanor arrests, and seven felony arrests. The following was seized, over 100,000 plants, 53 firearms, and 15,000 pounds of harvested marijuana. So in the spring of 2022, the, our LSD narcotics investigators conducted an aerial re reconnaissance with the California National Guard Counter Drug Task Force and identified 350 outdoor cultivation sites in the Antelope Valley. This is down from the over 750 sites which were identified in 2021. So we're seeing improvement here. This reduction in cultivation sites is directly related to increased enforcement activity here in the Antelope Valley. The Med investigators, investigators are currently in the process of serving search warrants at 80% of the identified sites with the goal of having 100% eradication by the end of the fall of this year. It's an ambitious goal, but we're well on our way. Investigations have conducted a majority of the illegal cultivation sites. They've tied them to Mexican drug trafficking organization, cartels, Asian organized crime, and other organized crime groups. Reports of threats by armed individuals against members of the public living near illegal marijuana cultivation sites and people driving on public roadways near cultivation sites have occurred on a regular basis. This is a real incredible threat. The threat to the environment and wildlife cannot begin to be calculated as growers consistently use banned pesticides and fertilizers. When harvested, these crops tainted by banned substances causes a serious health risk to unsuspected medicinal and recreational users of cannabis who purchase from the black market. Water theft has continued to be a concern for area residents and farmers here in the eastern portion of the Antelope Valley. With the state in a significant drought, the water used for illegal cannabis crops is alarming. Unpermitted water wells are being drilled, which threatens the underground aquifers. The average marijuana plants require a minimum of, of three gallons per plant per day. Just the 2021 numbers alone, that amounts to 150 million gallons of water was used to bring that crop to harvest. That is just an enormous amount of, of water. The amount of trash left in the illegal cultivation sites and the surrounding areas of the Antelope Valley shows the compound or the complete lack of regard for the community at large the one site I visited today, which was a combination of indoor and outdoor grow, it, the, the, the piles of trash were as far as the eye could see in every direction, you know, six feet high, just mounds of trash of, uh, you know, dis, dis, um, discontinued uh, or pesticides, fertilizers, uh, water things, uh, lighting equipment, electrical equipment, generators, generators leaking diesel fuel and uh, oils directly into the ground contaminating the, the underground uh, area. So through the use of the abatement 
significant progress has been made in, in having property owners remove all marijuana cultivation equipment and debris from cultivation sites and to renovate these sites to the standard of the community following the service of these search warrants. Civil abatements have essentially stopped the repopulation of cultivation sites for continued marijuana cultivation following search warrant service. In the past, we clean a place up after the search warrant, and then we'd come back three weeks later, they'd already restarted again. Now we're seeing that that is no longer the case because through the, the continuing uh, efforts on the abatement side, the place is cleaned and returned to its original uh, state. Prior to the use of civil abatements as a standard practice, cultivation sites were often left abandoned and uncleaned or immediately repopulated for marijuana cultivation. In July of 2021, the LSD narcotics investigators created the email address marijuana tips at lasd.org. Let me repeat that marijuana tips at lasd.org. This was done to facilitate and expedite the ability of local residents to provide information directly to the detectives investigating marijuana cultivation cases. This email tip line has been immensely successful thus far with nearly 400 emails that we've received with good information. This has quickly become a significant source for detectives to obtain information which would otherwise be unavailable. And we continue to request the public to use this email address. It's very important. If you're afraid to pick up the phone, you don't want to uh, get involved yourself in any way, just dropping a simple email. Heck, you can do it from your cell phone. And uh, that is the best case scenario for us. And we'll take the information, we'll process it, and if it's credible, and then we'll go about it, and that becomes the basis of the uh, future search warrant operations. Uh, thank you. Good morning, I'm Helen Chavez, Communications Director for LA County Supervisor Catherine Barger. Regrettably, Supervisor Barger couldn't be here today since she is participating in today's Board of Supervisors meeting, and I am here to present on her behalf. Supervisor Barger is a strong advocate and proponent of measures that will stop the illegal cannabis cultivation in the Antelope Valley and throughout her district. The Antelope Valley is a family-centered, community-oriented, and supportive of public safety, values that closely connect Supervisor Barger with her constituents. But this peaceful desert community has been disrupted. Illegal outdoor grows and indoor grow houses have sprouted and taken root here due to the predatory practices of illegal cannabis cultivators. Supervisor Barger has taken action at the county, state, and federal levels to address not only the issue of illegal cannabis, but also the various businesses and livelihoods that are impacted by these illegal grows. She has provided funding, including appropriating monies from consumer protection settlement funds to support the Sheriff's Department's enforcement efforts. Supervisor Barger has also worked to increase penalties for illegal outdoor and indoor grows, up to $30,000 per day. The funds collected go directly towards future enforcement activities. Supervisor Barger has involved as many enforcement entities to assist law enforcement as possible, including departments such as regional planning, public works, public health, county council, water, and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. She is a strong believer that we must attack this illegal activity on multiple fronts and involve as many partners as possible if we are to come out on top. Supervisor Barger is thankful to the partners who are gathered here today for their diligent efforts to keep combating illegal cannabis cultivation. Please know that you can continue to count on Supervisor Barger's support. Thank you. To any of those who are engaged in the illicit grows, I want you to know that there's a collective effort and we're coming after you. You can see right here on these trailers where your product is going to end up and it's not gonna be on our streets. You've come after a very sacred thing, our community. You've come after our desert and you're stealing our water, you're poisoning our land and enough is enough. We have collective partners here. We have 
our congressional leader, we have state leadership, and we have community leadership. We have a sheriff who has courage and is going against the grain and fighting against your success. It's time. This is our second effort in two years, and it's going to be very, very impactful. Very, very thankful for the courage that's been displayed by the warriors who are out there engaging in this operation. It's dangerous, but it's important. Our community deserves it. We're very, very, very thankful. And I just want to uh, tell Sheriff Villanueva, congratulations, and to all the deputies and all the other partners, thank you so much for your courage. It's about time. Thank you. Well, good morning. I'm Jackie Owens, and I'm here representing Congressman Mike Garcia, the 25th Congressional District. Congressman Garcia would very much like to be here today, but he's in Washington, D.C., uh, taking votes. And I just want to extend a heartfelt thank you on behalf of the Congressman to Sheriff Villanueva, to his team, both men and women who've worked. Today we get to see this press conference and everybody here, but this is the culmination of months of hard work, of planning, and a resiliency not to give up on this, this uh, very evil thing that's occurring in our valley. What you see here today is a combination of what government does when it works well together. We have the federal, state, county, and uh, city municipalities working together to combat the illegal marijuana grows, and as was stated, is just a terrible blight on our community. Our residents who've come here, who worked hard, who love their homes, have been intimidated by those who carry guns and then try to run them off or keep them quiet. They steal our water, and they're devastating the valley floor with toxins that are actually banned in the state of California. So again, I just want to express our gratitude to Congressman, or on behalf of Congressman Garcia to Sheriff Villanueva for his commitment. When he made the, the call to the sheriff, the sheriff got on board and he's not stopped. And I can guarantee that Congressman Garcia is not gonna stop either. About a little over a year ago, he was able to bring in Sarah Carter from Fox News to bring a national floodlight onto this issue. And shortly after that was the first raid, the largest raid in the history of California of illegal marijuana grows. And the marijuana eradication team has not stopped. They've stayed committed. We see them here today, but behind the scenes, they're working tirelessly, answering those emails, answering the calls, and, and staying committed to this task. Be assured that Congressman Garcia is also committed to this. In Washington, a few weeks ago, he was able to talk to and address Attorney General uh, Merrick Garland about the illegal marijuana grows, but also to ask about releasing the $19,000 overtime cap that's put on our deputies that really prohibits them from going past that dollar amount. We need them. We need the men and women to continue to combat this issue on the ground. So again, I just want to express on behalf of Congressman Garcia, thank you to the men and women who are here and who are working hard to bring back our community that we love and to make it safe once again. And Sheriff Villanueva, thank you. Thank you for your word, keeping your word, and staying steadfast to that. If anyone has any questions uh, or you have any concerns and that we can assist with, feel free to reach out to our office, and uh, we are more than happy to uh, assist in any way we can. So again, thank you, and thank you for being here. Marvin Christ, Vice Mayor, City of Lancaster. Like MacArthur said in the Philippines, I'll be back. That's what our Mayor Rx Paris said last year. He said it, that if they don't clean their act up, we'll be back. Alex brought the troops back. We're cleaning it up. But I want to make it perfectly clear to everybody, this is not just about marijuana. This is mostly about water. They're stealing the water that belongs to this valley. It belongs to this valley, and it's 85,000 acre feet of water. That's a lot of water. We're only allowed to pump 120,000 acre feet of water. They're using all the water up that belongs in this valley for not the right purposes. 
So I'd like to thank a lot of people that are here. You've heard everyone get thanked, but the city of Palmdale is here. The city of Lancaster is clear. And I want to make it clear, we're 17 miles out of our jurisdiction. This is not Lancaster. This is not Palmdale. But we're help cleaning it up. And that's what all the citizens should do, is they should help clean it up and do your part. So Sheriff Villanueva, thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for the deputies. And thank you guys for what you do. And be safe. Thank you. Steve Hoffar, I'm the uh, mayor of Palmdale. I hate having to follow Marvin because he does such a good job. I got to tell you, the, what everyone said here, the impact to our environment, the impact to our kids when they end up smoking something that's got pesticides uh, and uh, some of the uh, organophosphates and things like that in there, that's not good. That's a big problem. So nobody's, we're not sitting here trying to debate the marijuana issue, like Mr. Chris said. Our issue here is the illegal use and the impact to our environment and the impact to our families and the public safety impact this has when, when our friends are out here trying to ride their dirt bikes or drive down the street and are getting shot at because they got a little too close to something. Uh, the sheriff has made a commitment to this community, has made a commitment to the Antelope Valley, and I want to thank him for that. And I want to thank all of our other partners, especially the city of Lancaster, for the help on this issue here. These problems don't stop at the city border. Thank you. Now we would take any questions related to this operation. Actually, before we take that question, something we need to reiterate. We've already identified the problems that this causes here in the Antelope Valley. Downstream, illegal cannabis dispensaries in the basin is a source of extreme amounts of violence. You have robberies, you have murders that we're handling, other agencies have to handle in the basin, and they're all tied to the cash trade down in these illegal dispensaries. In fact, the illegal dispensaries outnumber the legal ones 50 to one, if they'll give you the size the magnitude of the problem that we're having right here. So some people say, oh, well, it's just harmless, it's weed, isn't it legal anyway? This stuff is toxic. And uh, the potency level of today is not what it was in the 1970s. And then on top of that, you throw in the fertilizer, the pesticides, and then you're gonna involve in a, in a cash trade that's gonna result in violence. There's so many problems downstream, and this is the origination right here, upstream. So we're knocking this out. So you had a question. Right now, for, for today, and this is just the start of day one. We're going to be here for a while. We've made eight arrests so, so far for cultivation and possession of firearms. 18 dogs rescued, one shotgun recovered. This morning, we've done 10 locations already. And uh, we also rescued five goats. I'm not sure if we rescued them from Birria or what it was, but they got rescued. And um, so some of the charges that they're facing... I know people want to ask that. Possession of a controlled substance with a firearm, that's 11370.1 of the Health and Safety Code, that's a felony. Cultivation of marijuana over six plants, 11358C of the Health and Safety Code, that's a misdemeanor. We need a district attorney that will actually prosecute these misdemeanor arrests. Possession of marijuana for sales, 11359B, is also a misdemeanor, but we have an enhancement, 11358 Subsection D, 3B, a felony, which is enhancements for cultivation using dangerous chemicals in the ground. So these enhancements are felony enhancements we can tack on. And George Gascon, are you listening? The community is suffering. We need you to do your part and do the prosecution. Put these people out of business. It's time for you to do your job. Yeah. Well, we can make it pretty simple. Go get them. <laughs> That's what we're doing.
Well, we need the help of more than one supervisor. We need all the supervisors to come on board because if a supervisor's district doesn't have the cultivation site, they have the dispensaries. So it impacts the constituents of every single supervisor, yet we're only getting support from one. So it would really help that the board lifted the hiring freeze because right now we're operating at a minimum staffing level. So every operation that we're doing, that means that people are working that much more that many more vacations are canceled, that many more days off are, are canceled, people doing double shifts everywhere. So uh, at some point we start running out of people. And we're at that point right now that we're running out of people. We're over 2,200 personnel short as a direct result of the board's decisions. And that is directly impacting public safety. There's no way around it. And uh, no, I agree with you entirely in that observation. The good news is when we do these operations, we're seeing impact immediately because the people, the cartels that are doing their, their own risk analysis of either invest in cultivation, if they see them broken up, raided, and all of their, uh, their, uh, their investment gone to waste, they're going to shift to somewhere else. And we're seeing that shift to other counties. And we're going to be assisting the other counties as well. And, uh, but we're definitely seeing movement in LA County where it's becoming less uh, um, less profitable and more risky to engage in cultivation be either indoor or outdoor and we want to make it cost prohibitive for the cartels pretty simple the community we're here to serve the community and uh, at the end of the day, if it, we go into a lot of overtime, I'm going to present that bill to the board, and they're going to pay it because we're doing our job. We're required to do this job. And because uh, the board wants to play politics with public safety doesn't mean we're going to stop doing our job. Oh, we're going to go way over the overtime cap, and I'll proudly go over it. And I'll do it every single day with a smile on my face. And I'm going to present them that big, fat check and they're going to pay it. Well, when it comes to public safety, we don't have an option of, well, let's just not do it because the board doesn't want to do it. That's not how we operate on the department. Our commitment is to the safety to every single one of the 10 million residents of LA County. We don't get to pick and choose because of what zip code you live in or what district you live in. <coughs> in my eyes, obligation is to the residents of LA County. The obligation of the board is to fund public safety, not defund it. Thank you for asking the question. I'm the president of the Antelope Valley Sheriff Boosters. They're underfunded. They give them tin foil for a bulletproof vest. They're underfunded. They're working 12 hours. You know what our captain asked us for last month? Beds. So his people can sleep there. Why are they sleeping there? They're working 12 hour shifts. We're down 30 people. Crime's up. Do you know why it's up? Because Gascon's not doing his job. Okay, our deputies are taking it in the heart when they arrest someone and they won't prosecute it. I had someone's house broken into the other day. They ransacked the house. They did everything inside. Imagine if it was your house. And the deputy said, they're not prosecuting this anymore. And I have to say, it's up for you guys to tell the story. You guys have to tell that story out there for us. We'll tell it to you, but you have to go out and tell it. The supervisors are not doing their job. We have one supervisor that cares about public safety. Who is that? Barger. Barger's doing her job. She's out here. She, she's participating in all this. She participates in and she funds public safety. The rest of them are participating in defunding it. Do your job. We have a sheriff here that's doing his job. We have the deputies underneath him that are saying, 
why and how can we do our job anymore? We're not funded correctly. It's, it's bad. And everyone needs to understand it. And I'm asking you, you guys tell the story. Tell the story that, you know, we're calling them out. I'll call them out. They're not doing their job. And if they're not doing their job, recall them. Thank you. Marvin Christ, last name C-R-I-S-T. I'm the Vice Mayor of City of Lancaster. Well, clearly, without public safety, we lose our freedoms. It's that simple, and it's, it's that honest. And so anybody that gets in the way of uh, public safety being successful is protecting the wrong entity of our society. And so it's very simple. If, if you're not making that priority, then you're irresponsible. And so we're just asking for partnership, and that's really all it is. I, it's not hard to figure this out. Well, as, as stated before, all people have to do is check the record of uh, what the actions have been of several supervisors, and they have not been in the corner of supporting public safety, and they need to change that, and it's never too late. So we would implore that they change their perspective and support everybody in this entire county because everybody benefits by public safety. Thank you. Daryl Doris, City of Lancaster. Doris, D-O-R-R-I-S. I am a city councilman. Um, I'm also a pastor in the community, so this hits both ways for me. I moved up to this uh, community in 1997. I grew up in Inglewood, California. I know about a drug-infested community. I know about what it can do to a community. I was blessed to have a father and a mother that kept myself and my three brothers out of drugs. So when I came to this community, I wanted to make sure the same thing happened to my family. And I'm getting very frustrated with now the very thing that I thought that we had left behind us has moved up this way. I believe, according to the scripture, I'm a pastor, so all I can say is what the scripture says. Micah, the sixth chapter says, the law is for the lawless. So if people are going to participate in lawless activity, then they need to pay the price for it. And we need people that are bold enough to stand up and do what needs to be done to protect our community. I have no issue saying that. I have no problem saying that. I appreciate Catherine Barker. I can't speak for the other uh, supervisors because I haven't talked to them. I only deal with the one that helps us right now. And uh, Ms. Catherine Barger has been a very great supporter. I support our council, our vice mayor. I stand with him on that. I stand with our sheriffs in the Lancaster area, our captain. They have been great in this area. And I believe that there is more that can be done by the people of power. I don't like people ducking and dodging. Stop making this a political thing. People's lives are at stake. I pastor people who are in tears over what's going on. And when you see that on a very human level, something has to be done, not just sitting in a desk talking a bunch of rhetoric. I think action speaks louder than words. And we can bump our gums a lot, and I know that's a term that we don't use a lot, but I see a lot of people speaking a lot of stuff, but nothing is being behind their words. Do what you say you're going to do. I like what they said. Do your job. Do your job. Make sure that every community is safe. Make sure every community is taken care of. We shouldn't have this issue. We shouldn't have to come together like this and, and fuss and argue and plead our case in front of cameras, Channel 7 News, when people should already come in with an attitude and mindset of holding folks accountable and making sure the law takes care of the lawless. And I appreciate all these men and women up here that are doing their job, putting their life on the line. And as a councilman, as long as I'm in office, I'm gonna continue to support the people that support our community. Daryl Doris, I support that message. Thank you all for coming.